So let's see if I can shoot a quick useful video that might help somebody. So what we've got here is a 60 gallon compressor tank. Uh, the compressor that was on this um, burnt up. Like originally this had a bunch of rubber and plastic that dripped over it from the, um, I think there was literally actually a fire. This right here, that's just a little bit of dried out rust and mud and stuff from the water that was in it when I had it flipped over. Um, what I'm hoping to do is actually use it as an auxiliary tank for my compressor. So I want to pressure test it to make sure that um, it's safe to use. Now, I've seen a lot of information online about pressure testing these things. I've never, well, I've seen one or two okay um, bits of information about how to do it. Um, let me give you something that almost everybody could probably do. Um, so what I've got here is my pressure washer. And, well, I was using it to clean the deck, so all the hoses out and everything. I figured now's a good time. So um, that's my hose reel. I got, I think, like 75 feet of hose. And what I did is I found a quick connect fitting that I could thread into um, one of the top fittings here. And I added the quick connect. That's the quick connect right there. And then a ball valve here, an adapter. Um, well, actually, it's just a male to male. Um, uh, 3 a MPT. Um, on this side, I've got a pressure gauge that's intended for testing uh, various automotive stuff and a few other things. It basically has a long hose and a quick connect to hook up the gauge. I've got the hose hooked up. It goes to 400 PSI. Since my um, compressor goes it's supposed to pressurize the tank to 150 PSI. I want at least a two times margin. So I'm probably going to test this at about 300 or 350 PSI. I'm not sure how carefully I can actually let this go. Now, I do have the hose hooked up. My pressure washer does allow pressure, at least hose pressure, through it. So I can show you that here if I open the valve. Pressure on the gauge starts going up. I believe my house water pressure is somewhere between 50 and 60 PSI, so that's what we should fill to. Yeah, see we got, I don't know what, 55? And we're probably going to test up between 300 and uh, 350. Um, I want to keep it under 400, but over 300. Hopefully I can do it that, sens uh, that sensitivity. I know, it's not quiet back here. I've noticed a lot of my videos, even if I don't have car noises and stuff like that, I have a lot of wildlife. Uh, it sounds like I've got, I've got a frog serenading us and a couple birds and stuff like that. So, um, so what I'm going to do next is I am going to start a pressure washer and I'll put you on a, um, on a tripod so you can watch this go. And then I'll just bump this so I can get um, the pressure up to 300 PSI or so, and hopefully it doesn't burst before then. Oh, um, the deal is that water is not compressible, so it doesn't store energy. I have this filled with 60 gallons of water. Um, I found that this fitting is the highest, and um, probably you can't tell, but I've got it on a slightly uneven surface, so the two fittings on this side are actually up the highest right now. Um, and what I did is, I before I hooked up the gauge, I actually um, popped this into the quick connect, pressed the trigger down, and you can see it's full of water. Um, and ran water until it was filled all the way up to the top. So hopefully I have none or very little air in here. So if the tank does burst, um, it'll only have the energy of that amount of air when it bursts. So it should be fairly safe. Um, there's probably about an, maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch of um, space above here. And I'm hoping that by running the water under pressure into here until it came flying out the other side, I flushed most of that out. And like I said, I put a fitting in here and let that go also, so that should have flushed most of it out. So if it bursts, 
hopefully I will just have a little, um, uh, well, I shouldn't have it shooting across the yard, where if it bursts full, filled with air, it could. So let me set you up on the tripod and let this go. So, I said I was going to shoot for about 350, the reason, well I said I was going to shoot for 300, but originally I planned on doing 350 just because I um, may at some point upgrade that pump to one that pumps up to uh, 175. So, like I said, I'm going for about a two times margin, I've got, oh I don't know, 352, 353, something like that. Now. Let's close off the valve, and this valve is only closing off uh, when the pressure washer is connected. These don't like to disconnect the pressure. And for now, I'm just going to leave it. Um, really making a mess. If it's got about 300 psi worth of pressure. If I release that hose, um, it'll squirt out and possibly get the camera. So I'll let this sit for a little while. Way to go DC weather. Well, I know the pressure hasn't dropped. I think we're going to call that good for the video. Just a quick update. It is, oh, I don't know, um, 21 hours later. And if you take a look, there's no evidence of any leaking or anything. Um, the pressure's dropped about 20 PSI. Um, I'm pretty sure that that is because it's been significantly cooler, probably about 15 degrees cooler most of the day today. And I think that the water in the tank is just cooler and that's lowering the pressure. Um, I'm really happy with that. I'd say that this is, um, I think I would call it pressure tested to 350 PSI or at least 330 PSI. Um, at 350, that covers a two times factor for about 175. So, um, I think I'm, this could be safe for running as an auxiliary tank for the 150 pound compressor. So, I think we're good. Curious. Always got to do something. <laughs>